Future Gabe here. It is the end of March, pretty much. It's March 30th when I'm recording this video, and this is Gabe from the future, from when a lot of these clips were. Uh, so as a mechanical engineer about to graduate college, I graduate in May, I kind of wanted to make a video series as I was going through like the interview process and taking anyone that chooses to watch this or for some reason looks this up just kind of some of the thought process and what the interview process was like. I wanted to kind of document the process of post C19, just kind of what the process was like for interviews, what the job prospects were like. As a lot of companies are facing that, there's a lot of tech layoffs. And just as a mechanical engineer and graduate in Canada that doesn't really know what they're doing because they're just graduating with a bachelor's, they felt like their bachelor's degree was pretty pretty like can pretty broad and not really like condensed into one area that would be a specialty so I just wanted to take the time to kind of take you guys through my journey some of my thoughts as it goes so a lot of these clips are probably in time order but it should lead you guys to the job offer that I ended up taking and I'm currently in the late stage processes of getting my start date because my BGI is still going, but it is about to be confirmed by the company I signed with, and I will have my start date be in about two months, in the middle of June. That being said, I hope you guys enjoy the journey. I hope this uh, answers any questions that you might have. If not, feel free to comment, and I would love to elaborate or give you guys some of my thoughts on maybe how the interviews went, specific interview questions that I either asked them or they asked me that I felt like stuck out and set me apart from other candidates or just anything I can do to help you guys out but hope you have a great day let's throw it back cheers we just got out of my first job interview this one was with an aerospace company based on the east coast that's as far as I'll go into it right now just in case there is any reason that I should have to not go further into it just to protect myself or the company if they do end up offering employment but when it came to a little more just interview specifics, when it came to it, it was scheduled to be a 45 minute interview. It was about an hour and five minutes. The distribution went where it was about 45, 50 minutes of me getting asked questions, primarily around how do you work as a team, times that you communicated with the team, demonstrated leadership abilities, how did you if you communicated something and it was wrong, how did you deal with the consequences and fix any actions that might have been created by the error in communication? What was your most challenging class? What was your easiest class? Going into specifics about projects and how they affected you. I was able to give a lot of information about that. There was also questions about building relationships and creating a team environment. So. Like if it was, what was a difficult relationship to be able to start, whether it be work or otherwise, and just kind of overall behavioral questions, gauging you on your ability to work in a team environment, to grow as an individual, or just to be able to give your abilities and put forth any positive attributes that as a company they would be able to grow off of. And candidates that would put you in a really good position or attributes that would put you in a really good position as a candidate because it's believed and it's seen that you can teach someone the hard skills like if it's a hydraulics and wastewater system you could teach them that but if they don't have the intrapersonal skills like the ability to communicate foster a team environment stuff like that then it would be unsuccessful from the start so just being able to have these opportunities, I feel like was an absolute blessing. And then it went into about 15, 20 minutes of me asking them questions where my first one and one of my go-tos is, is there any concerns that you have as me that you have for me as a candidate that I could address just to be able to make your decision process easier? Because that gives you an opportunity to write any issues that might be going on. Additionally, I said, what does success look like for a new employee? What advice do you have for someone looking to start into an industry where it's not one that they primarily worked with before? How have your views of the company changed over time? How did the company work to develop you as you went throughout your career? 
And that was honestly pretty much it for the interview. After that, we got a quick HR spiel. They told me there's a lot of great other candidates interviewing, but it should only take one to two weeks within the process to get all of this just done and to get through the process and get an update on it. And then we, they thanked me for my time putting forth an interview. I thank them for their time being a fantastic company to work for as a prospective. Thank them for taking the time out of their day and just for the opportunity of having an internship, or not an internship, but the opportunity to interview for a full-time position upon graduation for them. Then we just joked around a little bit about Savannah being able to adapt to kind of where they are within the nation, as well as just like some cultural things because they could see and recognize the flag behind me. And it was overall a pretty good interview, but with this being said, I do still have another full-time one tomorrow, so we'll have this with me. We'll look to roll out and over to that one. And then I also have um, just another one in probably a coming week or so with another aerospace and space company where we can just look to hammer it through. But this has been update number one on the interview. Day two, interview two done. This one was an applications engineer position at a smaller firm in Wisconsin. So, how did I think it go? How did I think it went? Wow, that was terrible English. A little frazzled by the camera, almost falling, and me just losing a few thousand dollars. But, <coughs> I thought it went pretty well. You know, it definitely was an interview I was ready for, I was expecting fully, because a lot of my internship experience and work has been in more of a manufacturing space focusing on a single company, a single product line, and that's about all I needed to do. And just anything involving that one. Applications engineer, you have a lot wider of cus of uh, like manufacturers that you're representing. You know their product space, you can kind of sell them, and you have your group of customers that you're looking to funnel and combine your work into and then give it to a customer. You're pretty much optimizing their workflow by providing them with parts that you directly have in-house and you can just establish relations in between brands. You know, I have some experience doing that, kind of from prior internships, but not really the most here. But I think the interview itself went decently well. Articulation was somewhat there, but my thinking on the fly, I kind of had to switch my mental perspective and standpoint, so that kind of threw me off during the interview give myself like a 6 out of 10 overall for the interview but I'm also being extremely critical but it's also it wasn't necessarily engineers interviewing me it was more business minded people the pr company president, the head of HR, and the head of the intern program so that one kinda threw me off as I started going just because it was a smaller firm but I just was a little more nervous luckily there is another applicant at least and there's a few more elsewhere, but the other applicant is actually a really good friend of mine. I was able to gas them up during the interview, was able to speak very highly of them. HR agreed with a lot of the points. They're excited to kind of interview the person, but will they actually schedule the interview? Who knows? This one's another one where the timeline is like two to three weeks for me to hear back, but who knows what'll happen or what'll be next. With that being said, now we go, choose the camera, clink it. All right, so it is Monday, February 6th, just around noon. I do have class in a little bit, but just kind of wanted to give a little preemptive update about the quality job that I'll be interviewing for tomorrow morning. Um, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of pressure behind this one, but there's also not pressure behind this one. Like. Out of the ones that I've interviewed for so far, this is like one of the top contenders kind of. And I don't really know how to feel about it because the one for Savannah was more kind of in my wheelhouse where it was more of a mechanical engineering job. Quality engineering definitely seems more akin to that of a uh, industrial engineer where a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing in the job description and what they were kind of looking for in the screening questions seem closer to industrial where we're talking like Six Sigma, we're talking about like anomaly processing, and we're talking about like a lot more statistically heavy based things. 
So as we're talking about like quality standards or quality management standards for systems. So we're talking ISO 9001, we're talking AS9100, and a lot of things more um, in the wheelhouse of that of a mechanical, or not of a mechanical, but of an industrial engineer, which I obviously don't have the most background on because a lot of our mechanical undergrad doesn't necessarily cover that. So luckily I've been given this like fat stack of packets here which is talking about quality management systems like ISO 9100 and AS or AS9100, ISO 9001. But I think that it'll be interesting because I kind of want to look more into the interview questions that they're going to get. I don't think anything is going to be super, super technical, just kind of based on this being a like E1 position. So it's kind of entry and they're kind of hoping to tailor your skill set to that of the job. But to the same extent, I should have a baseline of knowledge, especially based on how my pre-screening questions were answered. That kind of puts me in a position where I have to hedge my bets and I should probably come more prepared to this job interview than I would have if I just said that I didn't have experience in any of these settings. So that's kind of on me, but I do have like minor experience given most of these. But in the end, we'll see what happens. I need to prepare, I need to get studying, and I need to look over some of my undergrad education. I need to look into some of the potential interview questions, both that they provide me, see what I can find like online, but get back to you guys later. Pretty good, got most of my questions answered. It was out of my wheelhouse and their expectations because I'm a, manufa er, I'm a mechanical engineer that's done mostly manufacturing engineering internships and experience, so I have a lot of technical knowledge. A lot of technical knowledge would be a stretch, but I have technical knowledge, but operationally, We'll see how I did. Um, I think I answered the questions with a pretty adequate amount of articulation as well as touching a lot of important points. I think that whatever happened, happened. We'll see what happens. It should be one to two weeks to hear back from them, but it was a good interview with great people. Excited for the next one. Hey, how are we doing? It's been a while since the last update in this series, I believe and it comes to kind of the temporary end to the job hunt kind of portion of this video. Because as of uh, earlier this week being sometime in early March, I honestly forgot the date exactly, I ended up signing one of the job offers that I got. So to kind of recap, I think I got offered this position February 16th. I'm very fortunate to have that happen and I'm very fortunate that I was able to get into the interview process early and kind of go through it and then they gave me originally three business days to kind of respond or change my, or like do a counter offer and get everything started. They offered me on a Thursday or a Friday, I counter offered on Monday. When my decision was due on a Tuesday, I believe. Then it took about like two to three weeks of just kind of like, it's going through approval, we should have the answer in like one to three business days originally. And then it got bumped up to like early next week then that ended up following through to like the end of next week. Then I kept getting delayed, so on and so forth. But initially we had my offer, which will I do financials at this point? Maybe not necessarily. It was a really good offer to begin with from the start. Given the area and the state, it was just shy of the 50th percentile or the median for at least like entry level engineers given like the city, the state, and kind of the experience level. But you know, that's honestly really good and that was for, I believe the number was all engineers, not just uh, ME's or QE's or, I don't necessarily want to get position specific, but it was around the 50th percentile. And then like looking into it and talking about it, we got the benefit package. The benefit package is absolutely fantastic when it comes to PTO, some of the company policies, and some of my abilities within the job. But you know, I still wanted to counter offer. I was told if I was going to counter offer, make sure that it was merit based reasoning. So, following that, like, kind of conversation about the counter offer, I decided to hop into a call with one of my professors that is very high in the ME department here. We've kind of talked through some skill sets, some of the stuff that 
I could probably put forth into this counter offer and justify a, a reasoning for a raise. So I went for about a, I believe it was a nine to ten percent, like counter offer or like raise amount. So I was like, it's kind of aggressive, like 10 to 20% would be what I would aim for if I was in a job. Generally, I think it's 20% is what you would aim for. But that is if you're trying to get a job, or you're trying to get a raise already within a job. I'm not working full time. I haven't worked there yet, and I'm not experienced in this field. I'm an ME by choice. This was a QE position. I don't know if I've disclosed that prior to this, but QE falls more under industrial engineering, at least based on the description of the job and some of the stuff that they wanted to do and have performed in this role. So honestly, that's a pretty bold option or a pretty bold choice to just kind of say. Right off the rip, here's some of my skills that were relevant to this QE position or could come into use because I do have somewhat of a background in the field of reliability as well as some of the software packages. So then trying to push that in my counter offer. And long story short, after the few weeks of kind of debate when it came to the counter offer, they counter offered me again. And it was, I believe the numbers ended up to be like 6.8 to 7.8% of, of a raise. So we went up in price, but it was slightly knocked down from the offer that I was gunning for. Granted, I would have done it too. I think that my counter offer initially was too aggressive and that's completely on me. But at the same time, I wanted to swing for the fences in case they accepted the full amount, then I wouldn't have regrets. But yeah, that kind of like marks the end of the saga. I'll be living here until the end of May. I've started my background check for this company. I've done my drug test. And I'm pending my start date, given the results of the two. But I should hopefully have a career lockdown. Or at least a starting job out of college lockdown. But who knows, we are graduating into some questionably financial times, meaning I have the offer now, everything's signed, and I should have a background check passed and a drug test passed. But do I still have my offer around graduation? or? Is the economy too bad to where I end up getting my offer rescinded or something else happens in between now and then? Obviously, we don't know, but just to cover it or make like a quicker recap of this, I got my offer. I tried to raise it 10%. They cut me back to like 6 to 7% of raise. I called it good enough. I would have taken the initial offer, to be honest, looking back at it, but I have no regrets of trying to raise it. And then from there, I signed my paperwork, started my background check, did my drug screening yesterday, and now I am hopefully locking down a career and I want to help try and make the friends job search a little bit easier. But if there are any questions regarding this, what I did for interviews, my background, or just anything like that, I would be happy to answer questions below in the comments. And hopefully I can actually make this a video style worth watching. But have a great one. We're drinking some kombucha. Cheers.